Well, hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here and uh, especially to represent Kenzie Academy um, and just talk about our success uh, with Inscribe, um, a learning community or peer learning community and how we've used that to support our learners as well as um, figure out how we scaled um, that support. A little bit about me, I am Alice Zhao. I am the technical product manager at Kenzie Academy. I've uh, spent many years uh, developing ed tech products um, as a product manager. Um, and now I am working with Kenzie Academy to combine my experience in um, software development as well as product management and really solving um, so, or coming up with solutions for the tech ed space. But why are we really here? We're really here to talk about Kenzie Academy. So I just wanted to um, just uh, dive a little bit into Kenzie. Um, we are an online coding and technical school, uh, but more importantly, Kenzie Academy was created with a specific purpose of providing access to high quality technology education to really a wide range of learners with very diverse backgrounds. We work incredibly hard to make this as accessible as possible and inclusive as well. Currently, we have certificate programs in software engineering, cybersecurity, and UX design. And we've also just worked towards expanding financial aid options uh, to make this kind of education as financially attainable as possible. And ultimately, our goal is to provide the best education and support and provide pathways into the tech industry for anyone. I'm really excited to highlight one of our partners. Uh, we work directly with Amazon um, to provide opportunities for their existing uh, employees, and that's through the Amazon Career Choice Program. Um, we are providing these programs to uh, teach them technical skills so that they can level up their own careers themselves. Um, and whether they stay at Amazon or leave, um, they're giving them the opportunity to learn new skills. We're also one of two partners that uh, work with the Amazon Technical Academy. And what that means is that it is um, originally a curriculum that was only provided to existing uh, Amazon employees. Um, it's a very rigorous program in software engineering backend development. Um, and we are one of two partners that get to take the, that curriculum, shape it in uh, or, and have it work with our model um, and deliver it to a wider array of, um, of learners and then provide them with the opportunity to possibly get a job at Amazon. So we're very, very excited about this partnership. Um, so, but let's look at what life was like at Kenzie maybe about a year ago. Um, we realized that our, our traditional model of um, support um, we really needed to figure out how to do this better. Uh, but just for some background, I just wanted to brag a little bit. I do feel very, very lucky um, to work with such dedicated instructional teams. We have senior software engineers, uh, senior UX engineers, facilitators, and coaches. They are truly the heart of Kenzie Academy. They're absolutely the keys to our program success. Um, they help onboard learners to the program. They really facilitate the, um, the culture or spread the culture of hard work, accountability, and paying it forward to our students. Day-to-day, um, -day, they provide academic and learning support and, of course, encourage peer-to-peer -peer interactions. And we also have a team that enables career planning and employment goals or to help them um, reach their employment goals. But we realized um, that our traditional models of engagement were just not going to scale. Um, what that means is that, so a year ago, we were nine to five, completely synchronous. Um, and we had lots, uh, we, we lived, our whole world was in Slack. Um, all questions, all um, communication happened in Slack. And while that's a really great tool, what we found was um, that the learners were directly contacting our facilitators, asking um, the same questions 
And that probably sounds very familiar to you. You're answering the same questions, but individually. Um, and then they also found that they were in one-on-ones um, all day. On average, we were looking at, in, in the, you know, the peak, we were looking at 15 uh, one-on-one -on -one sessions a week for facilitators. So they really felt like they were bogged down. And if we thought about scaling our, um, our you know, learner base, uh, we were very concerned with how we would support um, all of them if we wanted to increase uh, the number of learners per cohort. Additionally, um, we were only there nine to five. And so any questions that happened outside of that, those hours, it was very hard to get to our facilitators. Um, and we also were in the middle of moving towards a more flexible course schedule. So uh, as I mentioned, we were originally nine to five, only Monday through Friday, which means that our learner base um, were those who could attend at, the, at those times. And so moving towards this flexible course schedule, we had to figure out what do we do to support, um, you know, support questions at scale and just helping that learner, just scaling that learner experience um, beyond that traditional way of um, learning. I also wanna give you some additional background about our learners, and this might feel very familiar to you as well. Um, so as I mentioned previously, we were only nine to five, available nine to five synchronous sessions, and we wanted to open the opportunities to different types of learners with different types of schedules. Um, so I, you know, I have these really cute little personas, but they really represent the different types of schedules that we are trying to accommodate. We have folks who are full-time workers um, working a very consistent nine to five schedule. We have similarly another um, learners who have full-time schedule, but also just in second shift. We also have those who work part-time, um, full-time students, and those who we found a lot actually just have extremely inconsistent schedules. Um, so part of our move towards this semi-synchronous model is to be able to accommodate um, more learners uh, with all types of schedules. But what does that mean? <laughs> it means that as we open up um, the, the school to different types of schedules, it just means that we're also inviting those who are just extremely, extremely busy. We did a poll at the beginning of September to um, find out what their current schedule is like, or their work schedule. And we just found out our learners are very, very busy. 56.1% of our learners worked 30 plus hours. And on top of that, Kenzie expects or recommends that we dedicate 30 to 40 hours a week to Kenzie coursework. And then layering on top of that, you still have their life, their family, their friends. Um, we're at, I mean, I feel like we're asking a lot of our learners, um, but they are truly so dedicated to this life change, a career change, um, that they are willing to take this on and, and um, work through it. And it's incredible. So when we thought about how we wanted to scale the support, um, we thought about something different than a discussion board. Uh, we wanted something less facilitator led and more peer to peer um, organic led communities. So that's how we found Inscribe. So back in September, we started um, with an initial community, our pilot cohort. And we created one community, um, and that's one uh, one uh, cohort. And we had a great success in that pilot program. We had so much success there that we expanded um, the use of Inscribe to our January cohorts. So we had three additional cohorts start in three different programs, and they all also utilized uh, Inscribe. Additionally, we deeply integrated those communities into our LMS. So what you're looking at right here is um, there's Canvas. Uh, Canvas is uh, where we store our LMS, um, and that is where they are reading their uh, materials. But inside here, we created this panel that came out um, using Inscribe's API. We were surfacing Inscribe 
um, related materials. So at the top, you'll see helpful videos. These are videos that are hosted on Inscribe that were shared by um, facilitators. And then we also have classmate conversations that are directly related to uh, the topic that you are uh, currently reading this on the screen. So you see that on the page, it says intro to terminal, and then on the same, uh, and we're pulling anything related to introduction to the terminal from Inscribe. We are pulling classmate conversations so that we're trying to surface all, not just you know, the reading material, but any, any conversation that's happening about this uh, from Inscribe directly back into the LMS. So we've got communities built, we have our um, inscribed, you know, deeply integrated into our LMS. What next? We knew that that wasn't enough. We also knew that we needed help from our facilitators to really push, um, you know, the move from Slack to inscribe. So what they did, uh, we had very, very dedicated facilitators who were just ready to, you know, reduce their 15 uh, 15 one on one sessions a week. And so they were relentless uh, at moving any type of discussion that happened in, in Slack, any questions that were asked, they would say, you know what, that would be a great question to ask over to inscribe on inscribe, and then we can share those answers to the rest of your cohort. So communicating that benefit uh, that I'm posting to inscribe really helped with uh, learner adoption of Inscribe. So at some point over time, fewer questions are asked on Slack and they go immediately to Inscribe to ask and answer those questions. So we've got all these moving pieces and learners on um, Inscribe. Let's take a look and see what happens um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So the, one of the first things we realized um, once we moved over to Inscribe was that there was just this drastic reduction of just sheer number of duplicate questions. We just didn't have them anymore. Um, people were asking questions. People can see other people asking questions. Um, you can see that the viewership is huge uh, on each post. And it just really shows that we don't have to have this, you know, repeated um, you don't, or you don't have to feel like you're constantly answering the same exact question in individual, uh, individual moments. You are actually doing it at scale. And then we have uh, folks who are just peers. These aren't even uh, learner, or these aren't the facilitators or our support team. These are learners who are answering each other's questions. One of the benefits of actually having a wide or, or diverse backgrounds um, is that for something like our technology programs, we have some who have come in with some experience in technology already and some who are, who are just completely brand new. Um, but we start from the same point. And we found that a lot of folks who already came in with experience were just, they, they understood what it was like to, to learn a lot of this for the first time. And so Almost immediately, we saw folks jump in and start answering questions right away. And I just feel like this creates this viral effect of, of um, others wanting to help others. And so I just felt like we had this very beautiful um, organic way of answering questions um, for, through peers. And of course we have facilitators moderating all the questions and, and you're able to endorse an answer. And so you can, as you know, the support team can come in and, and say, this is the, the most correct answer or this is the one that answered it the best. Um, but really you're just having this organic conversation sometimes or many times asynchronously across uh, your cohort. And then the, the other beautiful part of this is that we just have students encouraging each other. Um, you have, you see Eric here on the right hand, he's saying, uh, hang in there, keep at it, um, get help when you need it. Like, I think there's a part of our program where a lot of them come in with imposter syndrome. You hear that a lot. Um, and you know, because a lot of them are starting from zero and they are mid career, it is very intimidating. This curriculum is very, very hard. Um, but having 
having other students encourage you, it just, I think it really um, makes a huge difference um, in just being able to get through the, this difficult program. And operationally, it's just really beautiful see, to see a graph like this where, yes, we're asked, uh, there's questions that are gonna be asked outside of that nine to five um, period. And you'll be able to see that on Inscribe, you're able to get help and viewership and activity outside of those nine to five hours. And we have lots of learners who don't start their Kenzie work until 9 p.m., midnight, two in the morning, just because that, that's when they have time available. And so it's great to see all this activity happening at all times of the day. So let's take a look at just the things that are happening on um, Inscribe as well, just the different types of activities. Uh, what you see here is our last quarter. Um, we closed the first quarter right around uh, mid-January. So you see, we saw a decrease as they were just doing individual projects. But then once the new quarter started on the 25th, you see this spike here and then this general very steady uh, stream of activity. So it was wonderful to see that the use of Inscribe just remained steady throughout the quarter. So to dig in just a little bit more, we're looking at, at you know, the delineation of how many questions were asked, how many answers were, um, or how many replies to uh, questions, and then um, how many answers were endorsed. Um, so you, you see all different types of activity happening on the platform. And then this also just shows the difference between the types of, um, of posts that they're seeing on Inscribe, there's two posts or two types. One are resources that are generally posted by facilitators or instructors. And then there's conversations, which are your typical question answer um, threads. So what were the outcomes for Kenzie? We, going into this new uh, semi-synchronous model, we just knew um, because of Inscribe, we could scale support. And that's huge, that, that really proves out a very specific part of our model that we could increase our, our cohort size and we still felt that they were taken care of at all times of the day and the week. Um, we also saw a massive decrease of one-on-one -on -one support uh, sessions needed. We went from 15 during peak all the way down to three to four uh, sessions a week. And so what does that mean for us? It means that we have the ability to spend more time with learners um, or high quality time. Um, we also were able to spend more time grading. Um, so we believe a lot in leaving very high quality feedback and grading. I'm sure you all know it takes a long time as well. So by giving us some of our time back in terms of support, we were able to put it back into grading. But I also wanted you to hear from different learners, uh, different types of learners, and what they thought about the Inscribe experience. So we have, um, I took these quotes from three students we interviewed uh, maybe about a month into um, the first cohort. We have Eric. Eric, you may have seen, I mentioned earlier, he is one of those that came in with previous experience in technology. He wanted to be able to help others right away. And so he was kind of our first part of our viral effect of um, learners using Inscribe. And he says, I want to respond to my qu classmates questions quickly so that I can assist them with staying in the flow of writing code. I check all Inscribe email notifications to see if I can help. Uh, he also, we ended up, because of all his activity on uh, Inscribe, we knew he was very helpful and we eventually asked him become to become a coach for our new incoming uh, cohort. So it, it's been a really great um, experience to see him um, just use Inscribe and then you and then use it to help new new cohort members as well. Secondly, we have Lori. She came in uh, brand new to software development, but she was catching on pretty quickly. 
Um, she says, inscribe honestly is great. It's like a virtual classroom. I get a response fairly quickly and I can ask whenever I want basically. While reading, I'll see other folks on the assignment and I wonder how they are ahead already. So even though she is brand new, um, she has there's this level of transparency of where everyone is at um, by just seeing what people are talking about on Inscribe. And then we also have uh, Pam, who also was brand new to software development, and she was definitely struggling in the beginning. Um, she's one of our learners that has a very incons a consistently inconsistent schedule. Um, so she was trying to find time to uh, do Kenzie coursework whenever she could, which was could is just really any time of the day um, that she could fit in. Um, so she said, I always have Inscribe open. I do not close this. She was very adamant, by the way. <laughs> the first thing I do is look at the title of each post. I don't make a lot of comments, but I do a lot of reading. I'm afraid to reply with the wrong answer. I need to build up the confidence to post. Um, long story short, uh, three months later, Pam and Lori and Eric are all three very um, active members or active contributors on Inscribe. So over time, everyone got very comfortable asking questions. Um, and I just think that peer-to-peer -peer transparency is, is critical. Uh, so what's next for Kenzie Academy and Inscribe? Um, when we started out, we created communities um, for each cohort, um, but we're going to change and reorg this a little bit and then create programs at the community level and then allowing um, cohorts to talk to each other within that program. So really, it, at some point, we will be scaling all those questions over over time where co like new cohorts can see previous cohorts questions um, and really build on that library of information and scale. We're also looking at implementing Inscribe across the full learner life cycle. So what does it look like to have Inscribe in pre-start? Um, how do we develop community and comfort before day one of the curriculum? And then similarly on the other side is what does that alumni experience look like? How can we scale this this, this even further where we have you know, alumni who with now have real world experience can really answer lots more questions as well by current learners. So I just think you know expanding that use across all the cohorts and all the programs is just like it just creates this vast library that we can benefit from and scale. So overall, we've just had a lot of success um, using these digital communities. And I invite you to explore those benefits for your organizations as well. Thank you.